Yo, what's up? This is your girl Dragon, and it's time for another tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create your very own MetaHuman. This is going to be part one in which I show you how to get started and I'm going to go over the interface. All right, to get started, please visit metahuman.unrealengine.com and you're going to want to log into your Epic account. And once you log in, you're going to come to this screen right here that asks you to select a version. So you can see there's two different versions here. There's the MetaHuman plugin, but what we're going to be concentrating is the very first one here on top, which is the MetaHuman Creator. This is recommended for all creators and it's the latest version. So we're gonna go ahead and jump right into that and launch it. So just so you know, you only have a specific amount of time to build your MetaHuman. And if you exceed that time, it's going to log you out. Uh, again, no worries. If that happens in the middle of your session, simply refresh your page and you can start right over again. What we're gonna do is go to Create and you'll come to a dashboard in which you can select a model to base your character from. So let's go ahead and browse through these and find a base character. Now, as you browse through here, you might see some characters have a little exclamation point. Um, that basically means that the character uses specific assets that are best displayed at an LOD of zero and one. And I'll show you what that means once we get started. All right, let's just keep looking here. And I'm thinking that, let's see, let's go with Z uh, Ziva. I was gonna say Zeva, but let's go with Ziva. I think that's how you say her name there. All right, this is a really great base to start off from. She has really big eyes, and I really like the facial features here. We can definitely um, build upon that. So let's go ahead and select Ziva, and let's go. All right, once you select your model, you're gonna to come to this dashboard here. As you can see, there's tons of options. So let me go through each of them with you so that you can better understand what they all mean. All right, first up is, I call this like the animator board. Basically, once you are designing your character or while you're in the middle of designing your character, you can select different animations to display the character. So you can have them do the face ROM, which is your basic animations of them yawning, looking around. You can see how their facial muscles work and you can see if everything looks great and so on. You can also go to Body ROM, which will basically zoom out and you can see a full display of your character from head to toe. If you're making avatars, then you may want to concentrate on using the face ROM. Um, that way you can ensure your character is proportional and everything looks great. Another thing that's good as well is you have these different type of facial poses that you can choose from depending on what you're trying to do so you can see what they look like if they are sad angry <laughs> or fearful or scared and then they have amazing expression loops that you can use such as happy and again you have sad anger fear and then amaze So you do have the option of setting these to whichever you like, either facial poses, body poses, expression loops, or technical loops. And this will give you a better idea of what your character would look like once it's animated. Now over on the right, you're going to see your hotkey reference. And depending on which platform you use, it's going to display which keys you can use to change the camera. how to pan, set your focus point, and so on. Even rotate light, so it was very helpful. Be sure to play around with those so you can get a better idea and a better feel for the interface itself. All right, at the top left hand corner, you're gonna see a few options. You have studio, face, medium, and then LOD. Let's go ahead and go over these one at a time. So if you select studio, you're going to get a chance to select and change your environment. 
This will show you how your character will be lighted under different circumstances, whether they're outdoors or indoors, in a studio environment, and so on. You can see how their skin reflects and also how the detail looks. Depending on the lighting, you can also change the background color for certain scenes. So be sure to give that a try too. It's pretty cool. So next you have the camera and you can set it to auto. And again, you see the numbers here, which are the same that you have here on the right hand side. So if you prefer to use this, you can or if you prefer to use the hotkeys, you can do that as well. So next up we have the render quality. So you can see I have it set at medium and that's your default. You can go high or even epic. Just make sure that your system can handle it before you do, um, um, but you'll know if it can once you change it. Um, go ahead and play through the render settings to see what you like best. You can see how it changes as you go through them. So you see her hair kind of changes. The light doesn't bounce as much from the hair, making it look a lot more natural in this condition. We're going to go ahead and leave it at medium since we are doing a tutorial. Alright, so LOD stands for level of details. So remember certain characters can only be at a zero or a one. And you know that by that little triangle with the exclamation point on the lower right hand side. Now, this is one of the models that can only be at a zero and one. And let me show you guys why. Because the level of detail changes once you go higher than the one. And that's only for this character. Other characters are able to go all the way up to seven. So make sure you're okay with that if you select a character that is limited to zero or one. So you see with the one, a little bit more detailed, a little bit more sharpness on the eyebrows. The lighting kind of changes as well. This is zero. And this is one. Now watch what happens when we go to an LOD of two. The hair is completely gone, all right? So you will not be able to use this character in an LOD two. LOD3, the level of detail actually decreases. And then LOD4, LOD5, and it just kind of gets a little bit worse as we go along. So just Make sure you pay attention to that, that you are using a character with the proper level of detail that's set for that character. We're going to go ahead and take it back to a one, and there we go. All right, next up we have Toggle Clay Material. You can see she kind of looks like a character from Avatar, right? So this kind of shows you the modeling material, the clay material of the character, kind of like when you take like a prop or a character to blender before you add um, the material to it. That's kind of what this is. You do have the option of hiding the hair at any time you like. And then you can turn off the hotkey reference or turn it on. I like to leave it on because why not? All right, so over here, you're gonna see a little kind of a uh, menu here. And this is going to be used when we actually start changing the features of our character. That's right, and that's going to be coming up in part two, in which I'm gonna show you how to use the tools to build your character's face. I do hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Be sure to like and sub. If you do, you are awesome, and I'll see you in part two. Bye.